in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, in humbleness, in reverence, in thanksgiving, we humbly kneel and bow before you. We bring all our praise, honor, and thanksgiving to you as our Heavenly Father. And we have this opportunity and privilege to gather here and surround your altar of grace. It's not an altar of condemnation. It is an altar of grace and mercy. And loving Father, we have come tonight to hear your word. And we humbly ask as your servants that we may be sanctified, that you may open your word in a most wonderful way, that it serves to inspire, encourage, and uplift all of us gathered whether it be here in the congregation physically, whether it be those whom we invite from yonder shore who can share in this evening hour with us, or whether it is those who are connected by technology. Loving Father, you also know the prayers that we have brought and placed on the altar. We, there are ones in the congregation who have asked especially to be remembered for situations and circumstances, perhaps going through treatments and recovering from surgeries. There are others that have other challenges and other, have brought other things before you. There are, and we all bring our, collectively our thanks. How great thou art. We love you and we appreciate you. Oh, Heavenly Father, please come and be a part of our fellowship and let us feel your love and your inspiration in this evening hour in a way that serves to uplift, in a way that serves to encourage, in a way that serves that we continually grow and develop into becoming the future bride of your Son and that we can be worthy and ready for when he comes to take us home. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters and friends, good evening, and those gathered with us, as we mentioned via technology, and yeah, even those from yonder shore who can share in this evening hour with us. We have a text word which comes out of the writings of the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5, we read to you the 10th verse. Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Please be seated. Right. 
Yeah, every once in a while you call an audible on the choir leader, huh? <laughs> I could pretty much just say amen right now. And there might be some that say, okay, let's do it that way. But the word that we have this evening from the writings out of the Apostle Paul is a very powerful message. And one and the other might think, well, you know, that's something we've heard before. It's not new. It's not the first time we've heard it. But yet, it's a very powerful message. And it's good to hear this message again, Christ, or living with Christ. Because that's what we, as children of God, that's what we as Christians, that's what already we work towards today, living with Christ. That that which Christ teaches, his gospel, his message, his good news, and even in these writings here of the Apostle Paul and these, the epistle that he writes to the Thessalonians, which is a, a letter of instruction, that that continues to grow and develop in you and my, in your and my soul. That it is nurtured. You know, I, when I thought together in this evening hour, I thought of a campfire or those of us who have maybe a fireplace at our home. Yeah, when you put the logs in and you start the fire, you can't just walk away and let the fire burn and expect that that's going to burn for the next six hours. If it does, you got one big fireplace. But after a half an hour or after 30 minutes or whatever, you've got to go and Throw some more wood in there. Get the fire going again. Get it, get it heated up. And so, too, the word that you and I hear, it is in order to inspire you and I again. It's in order to kind of stoke that flame and that fire. And the word that our apostle of old mentions, I'd like to go back one and, and read to you also the ninth verse because it said, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And when I read that, that's a, to me, I took that, that's a promise. That's what our Savior, that's what our Heavenly Father wants, that you and I, that we obtain salvation, that we are part of the bride of Christ, that we become those who are, yes, we've heard them referred to even as firstlings, as those who, who, who are Christ's bride. When I read and prepared this evening and I, right away, and I know our, our choir leaders, they, they do a wonderful job and it, it takes time to put the schedule together. So I wondered, what is the opening hymn they were going to pick for tonight? Because this song that our deacon picked was the song that came into my heart when I started to read our divine service guide. Christ living in us. Christ liveth. I think in the old blue book it said, Christ liveth in me was maybe the wording. And that's our wish, and that's our, that's our goal, that's our striving. And Christ, it's interesting when the, the apostle of old, when he talks here to the Thessalonians, and in, through his missionary journeys, and that which he started, and that which he developed in these different countries, here this church in Thessalonica was a very, if you read in earlier chapters, he, he talks very favorably of them. But, even there, there was a, questions came up, if I can paraphrase it, and said, well, when is Christ going to come? Those who were members with us in the church, all of a sudden, they're not here anymore. They've passed. I mean, we thought Christ was coming again in the near future. And so the apostles, there he explains in a very nice way, because the apostle Paul, when you read that which he writes, you can tell that he was an educated individual. He he. He has a nice way of, of explaining things and, and putting things into perspective. And in this letter, he said, no, no, we don't know when Christ will return. And we could say, we've heard that. I've heard that for almost 60 years too. But does that diminish? Does that flame of that desire for you and I to become the bride of Christ? Is that through the word, through the inspiration and sacrament, through prayer, that also helps you and I that that, that that joy and that which the apostolate, the apostle of old, and today too, the apostles of today, they too proclaim that message. It hasn't, it hasn't died out. It hasn't gone dormant. It hasn't petered out. It's still alive and it's well. I remember we had a gentleman who came to, to, came to church. He was 
um, gentleman's name. He's still he's a member in the congregation here, Deacon Durham. He's retired, and one time he he I asked him. I said, "Why did you why did you come to the New Apostolic Church? What made you um, have that wish to become a part of our of, of of the congregation of the church? Because he was he was from another Christian denomination. Very faithful man, very learned man. Went through lots of schooling." Probably knew the Bible better than I did it. Maybe even today still. And he said, you know what? In your church, you talk about the return of Christ. Not my church. In our church, you talk about the return of Christ. And you keep that alive. You, that's something that's a message that's brought out on a regular basis. And he said, in my church, that wasn't the case. I missed that. I thought, wow. I have to be honest with you. Until tonight, I hadn't thought about that for a long time. And the message that we hear is not is for you and for me, but it's also for those on yonder shore, for those who have gone before us. I'd like to share something with you that I read because in our in our in our word for this evening there was a statement that I'll read to you as well. It says, "We believe that the dead in Christ have peace and security in the beyond," and then it referenced our catechism section nine point five, and there in that section it referenced. The Bible verses out of the wisdom of Solomon, which is an area in the Bible that not too often we, we are, are quoted. Out of the Apocrypha. And there in, Solomon, in the wisdom of Solomon, in the third chapter, in the first three verses, it says, But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. Is there a better place for them or for us to be in the hand of God. And there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. And they wait too. They wait as well. They, they grow. They develop. They, they carry on in their faith. It doesn't, it doesn't stay stagnant. As I pondered this word for tonight, even those I thought of how many, how many apostles are in eternity? How many, how many ministers are in eternity? How many of God's children are in eternity? Who do they follow? They follow the apostle ministry of today, the chief apostle. They don't follow the retired one from 40 years ago or 50 years ago. They follow the chief apostle of today, as we all do. Because when you read here, the writings of Paul, he says, when Christ comes back, it says he will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So those who, as it talks here, who sleep, who are on yonder shore, and those of us too, together. And so also they too, they have the, still the same longing for God's word. The same longing to be inspired. The same longing also to follow today too, the apostolate of today. Just as you and I do. And also, too, how, how it all goes over there, I don't know. We talked in the sacristy. There's, there's certain glimpses in, in Scripture where it talks about the one in Abraham's bosom and so on and so forth. But we don't know all the details. But we believe that they also, along with us, that we strive, we follow the messengers, the apostolate of today, and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Together, in anticipation of his return. When that will be, I don't know. And I remember as I, as I pondered and meditated over tonight, I remember Evangelist Bortmus. Many of you know him that are here tonight. And many, many years ago in Kingsdale, we had a district youth discussion evening on a Monday evening, back when they were on Monday evenings, back in the old days, huh? And, and I went to many discussion evenings, and I really don't remember uh, pretty much most of what was talked about. But what he said that night has stuck with me for over 40 years. 
We prepare as if Christ will return today, but we also prepare as if it will be 100 years from now. In other words, we're always ready. We're always willing to grow and develop and that, that Christ lives in us. And that which Christ teaches is every day a day of roses, is every day great, is every time we come to church, are we on cloud nine? Come on. I hope I'm not the only one that sometimes comes to church and, and it's like, oh, just let me sit in the bench and pray and sing a song or something. Sometimes we have those days. But our Heavenly Father, when we come, He sees that, He recognizes that, and He, and, and he, and he reaches out with His big arms and He embraces each one of us. And through different words and through different means of, of explanations, He says, you are my children. I love you. Please continue on. Please carry on. Please do Engage that which I teach, that which is my gospel. Engage it in your everyday life. As we sang, that Christ liveth in me, that those who are around and about us, that they can, that they can see that. And don't be afraid to tell people. You know, when I was younger, you know, let's go back to the days of, of, of Sunday afternoon service, huh? Another couple of decades ago. I don't know if I was different than a lot of others, but... In the afternoon, we'd be out playing football or baseball or hockey with, the, with my buddies. And then all of a sudden, around quarter to four, my mom would say, Kevin, let's go. Time to go to church. <laughs> Just what I wanted my friends to hear. Yeah, well, that was when you're 14, 15, 13. What it is, what it is. But when... We grow and we, and we maybe grow up in our faith, if I can put it that way. For me, I'm talking me. Now when somebody, no, I've, we go to church and what did you do on the weekend? Well, we had a concert. We had this. We Not ashamed to talk about our faith. Not ashamed to talk about what we do. Not ashamed to be promoters. Not ashamed that that which, to try our best, that, that which Christ teaches, that it lives in us and that it becomes our focal point, and that it becomes that which we do our very best each and every day to accomplish. Amen. Perhaps together we can sing our hymn, number 371. Priest Gross is here. We give him the opportunity to serve as well. brothers and sisters, dear friends, this evening we heard how Christ should live within us. And when the choir sang their opening anthem, it was all about how our hope, our trust, our, our life, everything that we have should be in Christ. Really, our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus, for us, should be the anchor, should be the anchor of our life. Everything else should revolve around our Heavenly Father. But our Heavenly Father should be at the center of everything. That way, as the choir sang, our hope, our strength, our love, everything that we have focuses first 
on our Heavenly Father. And then, our, then Christ's life really does live within us. And as we heard or read in our text, whether we wake or we sleep, whether we're alive or, or have passed into eternity, it doesn't matter. We should live together with him. It says we should. It doesn't say we might be able to. It doesn't say, well, on the off chance, maybe there's a little possibility that you could be together with him. No, it says we should live together with him. Now, is it always easy? Is it always easy to put our Heavenly Father first, that the life that our Heavenly Father has placed within us, that we give it first place? Sometimes there's a real, it's a real battle. How much room do we give to our Heavenly Father? Do we allow him full reign in our heart and in our soul? Or do we give him a little peace? Or do we maybe put put Christ's life on like we put on our black and white when we go to church. Huh? It's time to go to church. I don't know about you, but really the only time I wear my black suit is to come to church. Other than that, it's, it sits in the closet. Is that the only time we put on Christ's life? Is when we're about to go into our Heavenly Father's house and then we, we put it on and boy, yeah, you know, we, we feel pretty good, we look pretty good, we look good to the neighbors, if, you know, we're going to church. It all looks good. But have we given that room to our Heavenly Father? Have we given the room to the Lord Jesus that he actually lives within our heart and, and in our soul? And not that he only lives there and we give him, you know, it, we're not just renting a little piece, right? We're not just rent. Well, you know, my heart, I can divide it into, you know, a fourplex. And, and Heavenly Father, you know, you can have the bottom floor, but the other three levels, hey, that, that's for me. I'm going to do what I want in those other three levels. No. We have to let them live in all of our heart, in all of our soul, in everything we do, in all that we, in what we say, in what we do, how we act, how we react, what we think. All that should revolve around our Heavenly Father. And are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. And our Heavenly Father realizes that. There's room for improvement in each and every one of us. I, I, I know for myself, there's a lot of room for improvement. And that's why we come into our Heavenly Father's house, that we could have our sins forgiven, that we could receive the new life, the new strength to continue on, that we can give our Heavenly Father more space, that we can give him more room, that it can be more evident in our nature that Christ lives in us and that he is a part of us, and that we are a part of him. That as we read, we should live together with him. We want to be living together with our Heavenly Father. That's the goal of our faith. But we have that opportunity already today here on this earth to live with him. It's not something we're, we're, we put off. And yeah, down the road, yeah, th then we'll live with Christ and everything will be fine and you know, the streets are paved with gold and there's no, no sorrow, no pain. Yeah, then I'll believe and then it'll be real easy. No, we have to do it today. We have to start today. We can't wait till tomorrow. We can't wait and, and hope that down the road our Heavenly Father will send, I don't know what we figure he'll send to make it easy for us. We have to put the effort in today. We have to put the work in today. We have to give room today to our Heavenly Father so that it is evident to him when he sends his Son. And we want to be worthy. We want to be a part of the Bride of Christ. Who is he going to pick? Who is he going to choose? Is he going to take those with him that his life lives within them? Or will he take the ones that are, you know, well, part-time? Every once in a while. No. He's going to pick those that have committed themselves, that have tried their best. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to continue to do. That's what we will strive to do in the future. Amen. When Priest Gross served 
mentioned earlier how nice Paul describes things. In this same chapter, it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, you and I, the day, living in the day, putting on the the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Faith, hope, love. Breastplate. I think of a Roman centurion. They got, you know, this steel here, steel here, protecting heart, lungs, mage, and the helmet protecting the head. The hope and salvation. Recently, I read an article on NAC today. And it referenced the new apostolic hit in our hymnal. Bet you never heard it described like that before, huh? Song number 390. And in there, it's a very nice phrase that I thought of for in preparation for Holy Communion. His word of mercy our souls does nourish. What is that word? Your sins are forgiven. In the prayer of absolution, your sins are forgiven. His word of mercy, our thirst does quench. We praise him evermore. Our God is loving. Our God is loving. He loves us all. And in preparation for Holy Communion, together we can sing our hymn of repentance, number 353. Together we can stand and pray the prayer the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the commission of my sender, the apostle, I proclaim unto you the glad tidings that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, your sins are forgiven and the peace of the risen one abide with you. Amen. Amen. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, when we allow the words in the prayer of absolution to seep over our soul.
there is a movement of thankfulness, of appreciation, of reverence, and of love for that which you permitted and your son went through, the great love that they have for us, and we love you, and we appreciate all that you do to us and for us, and help that that love that you have showed to us, that we can show to others, and that together we may continue to grow into becoming the bride of your Son. Amen. And now we shall celebrate Holy Communion. And now the Lord's table is prepared. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I consecrate bread and wine for Holy Communion and lay there upon the once brought, eternally valid sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For the Lord took bread and wine, gave thanks, and said, This is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood of the new covenant given for many for the remission of sins. Eat and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. The body and blood of Jesus given for you. Amen. Congregation can be seated. The Lord now invites you to Holy Communion.
can rise and close the service in prayer. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, again, we, not as a broken record, but in humbleness and praise and honor and glory to you, we tenderly knock at your heart's door. And Father of love, we, we are thankful that we can gather here in your house, here at your altar of grace and mercy. Father of love, help us that we may continue to grow in oneness and unity. I'm reminded as I stand here of the sign that used to be written on the back, on the, on the balcony of the church on Victoria Street. Love built this church. Unity will preserve it. And then at one time I was told there's a third verse. Faith will preserve it. Love, unity, faith. And help that, Father, we can continue in these attributes and all that your gospel teaches us in order to grow in faith, in order that those who yet long for your word and for Christ and for salvation, that they too can be drawn in, the friends, and that your work may grow here and on yonder shore. Father, we pray for the offerings and sacrifices which are brought in the congregation. Please lay the fullness of your blessing upon them. We pray for the bereaved, Father, the Bechtold family as well. We pray for here our rector who will conduct the service for our faithful sister tomorrow evening, Sister Bechtold. Also be with him in his preparation, Father, that he can too be a wonderful outlet of your word, of your inspiration, and of your love for our sister in faith, for the family, and for the gathered congregation out of time and eternity. Bless our fellowship and that which is provided to dear Father. And later as we travel home, please let your angel protection accompany each one and that we may continue to eagerly await the return of your son that he may come and that we can be worthy to be his bride, we ask. And if we miss something, we know there are those that have asked me, remembered many different situations, please be with each one. We remember them, Father, we carry them in our heart. And we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We can be seated. The choir has a closing hymn, and then we have four announcements.